Hello, beautiful beings. This is Maruma Tu, and you are watching Sun Soul Astrology. And this is a daily planetary translation for May the 16th. 2017 and today the collective sun is going to be at 26 degrees of Taurus and the collective moon will be at 2 degrees of Aquarius at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time 1900 Universal Time. Now the biggest thing that's going on today is that the sun at 26 degrees of Taurus is going to be conjuncting one of the 15 fixed bohemian stars that doesn't have a very good reputation okay so we're gonna have to definitely be careful today its name is al gore al gold and it is actually known as the blinking demon and as far as you know badasses in the sky with a bad attitude um al gold gets a big 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 bad one so, you know, we're not a victim to the transits whatsoever. We can definitely take these energies and ride through them. But just realize that with the sun conjuncting this star right here, we're definitely going to feel a bit of kick in the aggravation department. You know, this is definitely tied to things that are more misfortunate, you know, you know, like beheadings and things like that, because it's connected to the myth of Medusa whenever she was beheaded. All that fun, exciting stuff. So definitely just, you know, um, if you feel any tensions coming over you today, definitely pay attention that the sun is going to be in a trine to the moon. So that is where we can find a harmony and our balance of our emotions and, you know, who we are and how we feel about things right now. So I would definitely suggest attaching to that. I don't even want to go into the mythology or too much about that. I just do want to make it known so that in case you get hit by a case of the funks, you actually know what's going on with that, right? Because the sun, like I mentioned, it's trining the moon. It's also trining Pluto. So, you know, the sun trining Pluto is definitely going to open us up to continuing our studies of the occult, you know, and taking more information about astrology and numerology, tarot, all of that good stuff that really gets us into these deeper workings of the self so that we can keep on, you know, recharging and reviving those old worn out pieces because at the same time we still have Chiron in the square to Saturn retrograde at the galactic center. So we are still in this time of being presented with the things that are damaging to us, you know, that keep us wounded, that keep us in these recycling patterns that we need to keep on motioning through until we really learn the lesson of what our Chiron is trying to tell us, you know? And as we talk about the transits every day, we're talking about the collective wound, okay? And this is in Pisces. So we're talking about what is blocking us from connecting back to source creator. What is stopping us from connecting to our own divinity? How are we tapping in and how are we communicating? How are we continuing to build, right? In the most productive way of all. Now, today Mars is starting to oppose Saturn, and so we are definitely going to feel this constraint, right? Mars is in the sign of Gemini at 17 degrees today, and we know that Saturn is retrograde in the sign of Sagittarius. They are 180s from one another, so once they start to interact within 10 degrees, they start to, you know, oppose here. With this being said, you know, Mars is all about our passions and, you know, with the sign of Gemini, we're definitely being passionate about intaking new information, higher knowledge. And we are stimulated on that lower form by playing mind games with people because it is stimulating. And, you know, whenever people get bored and they're left to their own devices, they do go into those lower frequencies. So to take the upside of it, we definitely want to use it for elevating conversations for getting into higher aspects of what's really going on, you know, build with people on deeper levels and things like that. But now that we have this opposition, we're going to have to definitely find balance and see what we're willing to do to see ourselves in the reflection of others as Saturn, 
you know, makes us more aware of our spiritual maturity. As I've been talking about this retrograde, you know, with reference to Saturn is all about us practicing spiritual maturity at all turns. Okay. So we now cannot fall into that lower vibration of the mind games that I mentioned that, you know, Mars being in Gemini can kick up. We have to realize that this is in the second decan that Mars is traveling. So this is getting stronger. The lessons are getting tougher. And so, you know, um, don't be fooled by anything right now. You know, especially with Jupiter conjuncting al Garab, another one of the 15 Bohemian fixed stars that has, you know, a bad rap for being, you know, having a bad attitude, basically. Um, we are definitely, like I said yesterday, in the midst of testing grounds once again, because it's like we keep getting this flow of, you know, testing, testing, okay, then learning, 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 and then testing, testing, testing. And we're not going to get out of this phase for quite a while. So it's like we just have to be mindful of everything that we do at all times. We're not being let off the hook from this. So as long as you can realize that this is what's going on, then you know you can remove a lot of the triggers that are associated with getting upset about these things and you can just kind of let them roll by, right? Because you know, I was talking about the quincunxes that we had yesterday. We still have them today. There's four of them. We are walking a tight rope of balance. We are making sure that, you know, our hearts and our intentions are pure, that we are operating from the place of love, from the place of light, that we are cultivating, you know, the higher dimensional vibrations. And sometimes it can be really hard, especially based on your present moment experience. Sometimes things can get really discouraging. And if you let yourself go down that rabbit hole, then sometimes it's hard to pull yourself out because it just feels like this is the resonation I should be in, which is like, fuck, you know? And um, you don't wanna go into that. You really want to alchemize those, you know? This is asking us to go into our ability to alchemize energy, you know? Just use your own intentions to change your own frequencies. And I've given so many tools, you know, the playlist, on YouTube, definitely the 432 today is gonna to be a good one for knocking out those negative emotions and clearing out the blockages in your energy body. You know, definitely do some breathing work. It's gonna be a really useful tool just for combating minor aggravations if we come up against them. And you know me, I'm not that big into, you know, speaking on the negative vibrations of everything, but some days we just have certain transits happen that are more likely to kick up this energy than others. You know, I mean, Lilith is still there, conjunct Antares, which, you know, is the heart of the scorpion, which has another bad rap. Also one of the 15 Bohemian fixed stars, but is part of the four royal stars, you know? So it's like, uh, it's funny actually, because Medusa is connected to Lilith as well. And so here's the sun right here, conjunct this mythological expression of, you know, whenever it re re, um, results in violence, it's like the beheadings and, you know, being electrocuted to death and all these crazy fucking things, you know? So this might be one of those times whenever people, if they let their emotions get out of whack, we see something big happen on the world stage. And so those of you who watch my channel, we are the light bearers. We are the bringers of the dawn, right? So we are the ones who are the frequency generators for the side of light and love. So it is so important for us to stay balanced and not add to that collective downward spiral because, you know, we all are on this collective feedback loop. So the more positivity that we can generate into this planetary aspect, the more that we can actually combat, prevent, stop and eliminate these, you know, violent situations that happen that just, you know, rock us to the core. And everything that happens, it just is like an accumulation on the last thing. And then, you know, the controlling factors start to lock down on us more and more and take away more and more of our rights. And it's like, it's, you know, we can't neglect that the controlling factors have access to astrology as well. So this would be a perfect time, you know, in ancient times, whenever um, Algol, Algol, <laughs> 
you know, was at its fullest and shining the brightest and in its strength, that's whenever, you know, ancient ways would go to war. You know, ancient leaders would say, this is the time, let's go in. You know, if the energies were low for this fixed star, they would definitely hold off and wait because they wanted that power behind them. So I just think that it's something that we need to be aware of, okay? Because we still have the fire trying going on and that's just, you know, Feeling, fueling the flames, you know, but trines are positive energy, they're potential. We have the trinity of potential, and I've mentioned this endlessly, so I'm not going to go deep back into it, but we have a lot of amazing, harmonious energy flowing through us that's giving us the ability to alchemize, you know, giving us the insight into deeper spiritual modalities and occult wisdoms, seeing behind the veil in a stronger sense, you know, the sextile that's happening from neptune to pluto is still going on you know that's the aspect that we haven't had since world war ii in 1942 this is us here in this moment making brand new decisions for all of us to move forward with so you know just don't re forget your responsibility today hold on tight to it because you know while we have this trine, you know, that's happening with Mercury just moving into the sign of Taurus and Uranus still in the sign of Aries, these two are squaring over to the moon and to Pluto. So this is some electro energy that can definitely combust on a high level um, on its own too. Damn it, you know? So let us um, find some, some bridges, right? some bridges and some uh, ways of not allowing ourselves to regress. You know, just remind yourself as you go through today that anything that pops up, breathe into it, process it as fast as possible and let it go as fast as possible. You know, because it's just one of those days. And you know, if you make it through today without any of those sort of aggravations popping up, then like, really realize that that is a place to cultivate gratitude like be so grateful for that you know because when we look around and we're cultivating that gratitude it's things like that that really accelerate us into finding more things that we have gratitude for so let us get into these degrees for today okay because the collective sun at 26 degrees of taurus where our goal is it's A-L-G-O-L, -L, Algol, I think, I'm not sure, but 26 degrees, grotesque rocks on a sand garden. The inward image and the outward reflection are worlds apart, building up inside to a state of being that carries immense challenges. You see your own personal nature as an objective universal force to be reckoned with and persist in seeing it egocentrically, preferring massively your own company contained within yourself, imaginatively self-enchanted, yet also capable of radical turnabouts and rebirths, awakening false and true, awakenings false and true, great and small, knowing yourself to be somebody special, self-consciousness enshrouded, enshrined, a dead end or path, oblivious or realizing the way of things, getting out of the way or being squarely in the way, self-importance and its overcoming. Yeah, I mean, you know what? This is such a dualistic degree. So we have, again, you know, like I said, the option to go into the lower or go into the higher. If we get caught off by the lower, we can alchemize it and change it. So. You know, the inward image and the outward reflection are worlds apart. And this is what we're trying to do. This is why I'm saying, you know, we are all the generators of light and love. So if we can maintain the balance here, we have that great opportunity to make the outside have a lot more of a match to the inside, you know? But as soon as we give ourselves over to that lower dimensional energy, we become a catalyst to all of that and we, you know, single-handedly like assist in the process of the destruction that we see in this world and we really don't want to do that, you know? This is what we have to remember at all times of why it's so important to cultivate, you know, positive vibrations. 
Okay, so building up inside to a state of being that carries immense challenges. Hmm. You know, and this can go both ways as well. Are If you're building up inside, you know, to a state of being of the light or the dark, it's like either way, you're kind of busting at the seams right now. I mean, so we're just going to have to appreciate the shadows. You know what I mean? They've taught us a lot of lessons. We're going to have to make the shadows submit to the light so that we can feel an ease come over us. Because, you know, whenever Uranus is involved in anything, which it totally is in this grand trine, still conjuncting Mercury, this is our nervous system, okay? So with Mercury moving into Taurus, common sense should rule the day. So really go with that thought process. Really switch your mental gear to common sense, and that will help guide you a lot further than like, you know, rash outbreaks within the moment, you know, spontaneous rage and shit like that. Stay logical, stay grounded, stay commonsensical, and it will definitely, you know, prove to be a valuable asset to you right now. You see your own personal nature as an objective universal force to be reckoned with and persist in seeing egocentrically. Now, you know, if we can definitely continue to see our own personal nature as an objective universal force to be reckoned with, that's definitely taking the higher. But whenever we persist in seeing it egocentrically, you know, that could definitely be falling into the category of, you know, that kind of lower vibration of ego because we really want to see ego as ourselves, you know, who we identify ourselves to be, not that it's over anyone else or to be judged as higher or better, but it is something that we need to know. We need to know who we are as an ego. We need to know what our value and our worth is, you know, so that whenever things like this pop up, we don't get pushed out of balance because we are so firm and everything that we've cultivated. So, preferring massively to your own company, contained within yourself, imaginably, imaginatively self-enchanted, now, definitely um, preferring your own company is a positive, contained within yourself is also a very positive because, you know, if we are contained within ourselves, it means that we are being very mindful about how we use our energy, you know, how we share our energy because, again, we all mix, we all blend energetically whenever we step into the field of other people, whenever we project imaginatively into others realms you know so if we're in that imaginatively self-enchanted area that's whenever we're not realizing how powerful we are as co-creators when we're not realizing how powerful we are as an individual part of the whole right so we can be affecting things on a very negative scale and manipulating energetically so sometimes whenever you do, you know, take that time to really come to the appreciation of your own company, really, you know, contain yourself within and then, you know, make sure that you're not being manipulative in your imaginary self enchantment and you're actually being very real about it. This is whenever the whole thing shifts and turns because we can fool ourselves as much as other people can fool us and we definitely don't need to be adding to any of the illusions that are already present in this world, right? We need to be like crystal clear with at least ourselves, you know, at least ourselves. And it's funny because so many people invest so much time and energy into being clear with other people. You know, getting to know other people far past where they know themselves to be. And it's interesting. We should really just cultivate this for some good, a good amount of time because this is what this has all been about. You know, everything has shifted and changed. All of our perceptions have altered, you know, so it's for the betterment of everything. So yet also capable of radical turnabouts and rebirths. And this is awesome, right? Because no matter what we are up against, no matter what we have experienced in the past, we have this opportunity to have radical turnabouts and rebirths, you know? And the opposite of Taurus is Scorpio, right? So death and rebirth is its part of Taurus's makeup as well, you know? It also has this phoenix rising from the ashes type of vibration because that's another part of its whole, right? 
So the other side of this sun degree is the occult, is behind the veil, you know, is the Plutonian energy that Mars co-rules as well, you know? So it's like, we have to understand that we are not just floating out in this, you know, cosmic sea without a lifeboat. We really have like planetary allies that are on our side. And even whenever we don't see it, you know, we, the sun, like I said, it's transiting Taurus, but the opposite is Scorpio. So even though we don't see that something's going on in Scorpio, there really is because Taurus alone is activating it, right? So awakenings, false and true, great and small. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and it's funny because those awakenings, false and true, great and small, you know, the false and the small are going to happen whenever we're just not aware, you know, aware on all foundational places. You know, it's, it's the cultivation of self beyond, you know, because then your awakenings can't be false, you know, because you can't be tricked by yourself or by other energies that exist on the astral plane or other people. You know, but as soon as we look for other people to tell us who we are or to tell us, you know, what we should do and when we should do it, that's when we give our power away and whenever it gets to be a very big struggle and realizing that we can trust ourselves in our own intuitions. And then those, you know, awakenings become great and they become um, true and great, you know? So, knowing yourself to be somebody special, that you should. You should know yourself to be somebody special in the highest vibration, not the narcissism. And I shouldn't even have to explain what platform I speak from that on, but I realize that I do acquire new viewers and new subscribers every day. And so some of you may just be joining me and thank you very much for that. I appreciate you joining us all at Sun Soul Astrology, but yeah, that's kind of the vibration of it, you know? Staying in the highest and knowing the self to the truest. Self-consciousness enshrined. You know, Taurus has a lot to do with self-consciousness and we need to definitely leave those aspects behind because that's how, that's whenever we're judging ourselves through other people's eyes that we really start to worry and become self-conscious and uh, to enshrine that aspect of self is to honor it, you know what I mean? And we need to not honor those places that we go into a lower vision of ourselves. You know, all of those things that you see as negative about yourself, other people find to be positives, you know? And it's just a filter that you have on the world, you know? And it projects onto other people, you know? And I experience it in my own life, you know, even though people watch me every day and I feel like I convey my message very well, you know, they will still, you know, sometimes judge themselves through my eyes and it always um, baffles me, you know, and that's probably the only thing that actually hurts my feelings sometimes is whenever people pull me into that lower vibration in their own mindset, you know, because it's like, I think I've done as much as I could possibly do to show that that's not how I process this world. You know, so I'm not judging anyone for anything, you know, that's why it's a positive for me to be in the position that I'm in to work with people no matter where they are or what they're going through to take them to a different place because it's like there is another place to go. You're not stuck in whatever vibration you're in. So who cares about where you are now? Let's get to where you want to be. That's the end all be all goal. So a dead end path. A dead end or a path, oblivious or realizing the way of things, getting out of the way or being squarely in the way. <laughs> the dead end path, dun dun dun, oblivious or realizing the way of things. Yeah, hopefully we're realizing and we're not just oblivious because the oblivious state is what's gotten us into all of this crazy shit that we're in as far as, you know, a collective and so let us go ahead and do the realizing of the way and getting out of the way or being squarely in the way. So this is what I'm saying exactly about, you know, generating the positivity and holding space for that at all costs because you know your role. You know your role. You're not here to generate negative shit. You're here to ger generate the positivity. And now you know how important that is. You know, so either you're getting out of the way 
and building on the light or you're getting squarely in the way and blocking the light, right? So let us generate self-importance and its overcoming. Yeah, it is so important to overcome the parts of self that, you know, believe that it's okay to stay in those lower vibrations. You know, we have to see our energy expand far past ourselves, you know, and how it connects. Because the self-importance and its overcoming is going to show that we've surrendered. You know what I mean? We have surrendered to our higher calling. You know, we are the light workers. We are the Reiki healers. We are the chakra balancers. We are the first, second, third waves of volunteers. You know, we are the 144,000. We are the walk-ins. We are the ascended masters. We are our ancients reincarnated. You know, we are star seeds from different planetary systems, extraterrestrial consciousnesses. We're here for something much bigger than getting caught up in just the day to day. So sorry to beat a dead horse, but that's just the vibration of the energy. And you know, I know there's so many of you that are gonna be untouched by this day and I love you all so much. Thank you for generating the positive love and the light. So the moon at two degrees of Aquarius is an unexpected thunderstorm. Yippee, right? And so it's funny that at two degrees of Aquarius and you know, the sun at 26 degrees of Taurus, those two aspects are going to be trining one another, which again, as I mentioned, is a positive balance. But now we're going to add these two degrees together after just reading that first line and see what we come up with. Okay. The symbol shows the need to withstand storms and things that whip up unexpectedly. It can show sudden flashes of inspiration, intuition, or clairvoyance. Those aha moments. It can be thoughts and emotions that erupt from out of nowhere. They can be brilliant or unstable or both. You will likely find what you are suddenly tested and taken by surprise. That you are suddenly tested and taken by surprise. Inner strength and stability are put to the test, but you learn a lot from your experiences. The effect can be quite liberating, although there can be an initial shock. Thunderstorms clear the air after an extreme buildup of energy. There can be a sense of awe and wonder at the power of natural events. Sudden vis visitations of natural wonders, breakthrough moments, a break in tension in the atmosphere, thunder, lightning and electricity, the tower card, being a lightning rod. Ouch, being a lightning rod would kind of hurt, but Okay, so you know, um, this is also again, just like that Taurus degree, dualistic, you know, because here's the need to withstand the storms and the things that whip up unexpectedly. And that's what this day is. It is the storm that whips up unexpectedly because the planetary influences just, you know, bombard our planet and we feel it on that real time visceral level as we are all made of water and we interact with the tides and the motions and the transits, right? So this is what it's all about. This is that unexpected storm. So it can show sudden flashes of inspiration, intuition or clairvoyance, those aha moments. And that's what I'm saying. I'm going to just sound like a repetitive fucking robot for this daily because it's like, damn, you know, these sudden flashes of inspiration and intuition and clairvoyance is like, oh my God, I am so meant for these moments. Like I have been trained my entire life with so many things to overcome, so much negative energy to transmute that I have made it to this place that when these energies hit the earth, I am strong enough to withstand them and to transmute them for the rest of the collective. Like, oh my God, I have the power to, and to protect this planet, to protect its consciousness and to protect its inhabitants. You know, we are that strong on an energetic level and we are stronger in numbers. So that's why this is amazing. This is that aha moment that we are like, so many more of us are awake. So many more of us are aware. You know, I have like 
2,200 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Thank you so very much. But imagine all of us, you know, cultivate this energy for today. Only, you know, 2,200 of us can make a massive difference, but we all have to play our part. We all have to do our job. None of us can slip because imagine if we're the only, the only ones, of course we're not, but imagine if we were. How hard would we strive for that excellence? So it can be thoughts and emotions that erupt from out of nowhere. Yes, it can, and those are the most intense, right? I mean, the good news is, is that the moon will continue to transit through Aquarius and the moon in Aquarius is very detached. It allows us to see emotionally a larger perspective where we don't get so wrapped up in um, hurt feelings and negative vibrations, right? So this is a positive for the moon transiting through Aquarius. Okay. They can be brilliant or unstable or both. Yeah, so whenever those thoughts or emotions erupt out of nowhere, let's go with making them brilliant, you know, and not having them be unstable. But like it says, it can be both. And we know what we need to do to restabilize and just go with the brilliance. We don't need to go back into all that because I already have during this broadcast. So you will likely find that you are suddenly tested or taken by surprise. And thank God for astrology because it won't be a motherfucking surprise. And damn right, it's a test, as I mentioned, it's a test of our emergency self-balancing mechanisms, okay? Once you cultivate spirituality, no matter what it is that you've studied, no matter how much information you know, you've studied it and acquired it in the name of becoming a self-balancing mechanism. So it's like useless to intake the knowledge and not actually utilize what you have at your disposal. Just saying. <sighs> so the energy can be quite liberating, although there can be an initial shock. Yeah. But don't get overtaken by it. Allow it to be liberating, right? Thunderstorms clear the air after an extreme buildup of energy, and that extreme buildup of energy is, you know, those Uranian type of moments that is just like lightning shot you straight up your ass, and you're just like, what the fuck was that? Like, why? Like, ow, you know? And all of these planets speak to us on what we need to do to change and transform. So, you know, if you get fucking your ass kicked today, it's because you're just, you're fighting the flow. I've mentioned this this week, you know? Like you're going against the universe, you're going against your own intuition. You need to learn to pay attention to those messages, trust in them. This is what Saturn retrograde and Jupiter retrograde and Pluto retrograde are all about. Bringing this into an applicable um, functioning whole. You know, we are a functioning whole. Don't forget that. So there can be a sense of awe and wonder at the power of natural events and yeah you know such things as the aurora borealis and you know thunder and lightning storms on their own are really magnificent and so like whenever we let off an electric charge of our own body and we create new sparks you know and hopefully we can spark the quantum realm with it and move multi-dimensionally and find that there is just you know a lot of avenues that are open to us that we might not have realized before. So, sudden visitations of natural events, breakthrough moments, a break in the tension of the atmosphere, thunder, lightning, and electricity, the tower card, being a lightning rod. And you know, the tower card is very much about, you know, being resistant to changes that need to be made. And so, you know, it's represented by a tower basically burning. And, you know, the tower will burn down if you stay too long in these situations that you know you're not meant to be in. So whenever lightning strikes and you become the lightning rod, the power of the universe moves through you with its transmission. And it can definitely be all of the things that this degree is talking about, it can be painful, it can be awe-inspiring, it could be shocking, it can be um, just a sudden storm out of nowhere, right? So this was the Sabian symbol for the moon and the cautions of it is losing control without warning, emotional instability, bottling up and then blowing out, storms in a teacup, 
seizing up with fear, load banging, loud banging crashes that stun. Man, you know, I mean, we've gone over this of why things like losing control without warning and emotional instability will come up today. You know, that bottling up and then blowing out, you know, obviously. Obviously, we should be doing the work that stops us from having that explosion if we're living in our truth and you have to tell people the truth. You know, you have to tell people the truth. You cannot let people live in a lie. If you're unhappy with the life that you're living, you know, take a partnership, for example, whenever your partner looks at you in your eyes and you know that they love you and they ask you, baby or honey, are you, are you happy? Like, is this a life that you want to live? And inside your head, you're saying, fuck no, I hate this. I'm not in love with you anymore. I don't want to be here. But you're just like, yeah, everything's good. Don't worry. It's fine. I mean, you're letting people live in a fucking lie. You know, this is where things go really fucking wrong. And you get a storm in your teacup. And you seize up with fear. You know, and seizing up with fear is just like so hard because it's like you fear hurting people's feelings you fear the changes you feel the the ramifications of living in your truth but what you actually do is you create freedom not just in your life but also your partner's life to go on the path that they're really meant to live in and the harder that you struggle to live in an illusion and let other people do that too the harder that these planetary energies are going to bash down on you and make you change. You know, it's unfair. We live in such an unfair situation based on um, good intentions. And it's really freaking weird. It's a total fucking conundrum right there. But it is what it is. <sighs> yeah. Loud banging and crashes is done. It's just that our nervous system is going to be highly overprocessed today. And you know, we've been downloading so much and we've been pendulum swinging so hard. And it's like, you know, literally what goes up must come down. And we're just, you know, again, the universe wants to see how do we handle all of this? You know, how do we handle it? So you're the best judge of that. You're the one that knows your truth and you're the only one that can be honest with yourself at the end of the day. So I do want to mention that I am doing a Pluto retrograde reading. It is 30 minutes. It is $30. We go into your Pluto placement in respect to this Pluto retrograde experience as a transit that we're happening now, that is happening now. Pluto is retrograde until September 29th, and it is talking about an opportunity to get off of this karmic wheel of rebirth and move into our place where we can cultivate all of our psychic abilities that we've accumulated over all of our past incarnations and use those for the highest, okay? And also use them to pull ourselves out of the struggle, which will essentially pull everyone out of the struggle. So I go into this based on your natal, your progressed, and your draconic chart. Your draconic chart is the chart of your oversoul before you incarnated, and Pluto represents your soul. Where Pluto falls into those charts is a representation of the age that Pluto is asking you to recall these memories from your Akashic from. So we do that, we meet on Skype, we talk one-on-one, -on -one, and all of my services are listed in the information section below, how to get a hold of me, everything like that. You book your own appointment and we meet. And I will see you tomorrow. I'm here every day. And I love you so much. Thank you to everybody out there who comments and shares the blessings. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And God bless. To me. Absorb my life. Let me illuminate you. Close your eyes. Can you hear my voice? Whisper.